Okay, so I started recording. So we just finished kind of going through the, which one was it? Labor investment metric yep. to try to kind of bolster that one up a little bit prior to release. So if you want to track on that a little bit, Gary, um, Vinod or Kevin, did you have any other comments on that one? Uh, no, I'm all right. Writing an Excel file will be good uh, as a taste case example. Yeah. On the, even on the GitHub, like it'll be, so if somebody wants to download the Excel file, they can just download the Excel file, plug in the values and test it. Yeah. Here, are you tracking what we're doing here? Yeah, I'm going through reading labor investment right now. Okay. We could even provide Excel files pre-populated with, with hard numbers, you know, so you don't even have to. Yeah. You know, just, just as a, an orientation thing, that'd be good. Can I go ahead and just merge all of the changes to clean up the document? Uh, yeah, if you want. I just wanted to allow people to see what I was doing. Are you saying like accept the things in the Google Doc? That's what I'm talking about, yeah. Yeah, go ahead. If there's still discussion going on, then it might be too early. No, I think we're good. Okay, then I'll start making. Yep. Um, for ease of discussion, by the way, I dropped all of the men, the, the value. Uh, I see that, thank you. Thank you very much. I'll trade it if you prefer, but this is helpful, thank you. Okay. Um, Anybody want to have more discussion on that one or you want to move on to the next one? You can move on. And I think even if we could just get two done today, that'd be good because we'll meet next Friday. Yeah. That's Still well within the window of, okay. Yeah. Okay, so issue velocity. What the speed of closing an issue? Okay. So what is issue, issue, what is issue velocity? Okay. Uh, Haven't they started recording? I have started recording. Let me bring this up. Let's see here, labor investment. Okay, issue velocity. So here is, um, here's the idea that I had here. Uh, so when you're looking at value from the point of view of an open source program office manager, one of the things potentially that you could say to your bosses is, hey, you know, what we're bringing to the table is a way to innovate around things that people really care about in a way that we can't in-house. So we can increase your speed of innovation by putting things into the open source realm in a way that um, you can't duplicate if it's, if it's just looked at by in-house people. So that's, that's kind of the, the, the raw idea that I had around innovation velocity. So the premise would be that um, your open source projects are gonna have more issue velocity. In other words, the, the number of issues that are closed are greater and the amount of time that issues are open is smaller that, that you're gonna be able to deliver a greater innovation issue velocity with open source than you can with in, in-house um, repos. Okay. And I would argue, uh, or I would, um, I would say that issue velocity, you could, you could look at it as a proxy for innovation. So um, most business uh, Offices are going to be very interested in speed, and they're going to be interested in innovation. You know, we want to we want to we want to move uh, our product faster than our competitors, and we want to have more innovation sort of embedded in our assets than than our competitors. So, issue velocity, uh, at least in my mind, as a, as I was writing this up, I was I was thinking, well, issue velocity is a proxy for these values that I think business managers are going to care about. What was the project, um, Georg or Kevin or not? Do you remember the project that had velocity? Was it Hyperledger? Do you remember there was I like? I know what you're talking about. Um, I'm trying to think. 
cloud native. It's CNCF. I found it. So I'm going to put something in the chat here. Mm. It's old. It's from 2017. Yep. And they also include issues, but they add more dimensions to it. They also include pull requests and comments. So what if we changed instead of issue velocity, they have a, is there like a universal word that covers issues, pull requests and commits? Or some meta word? Yeah, okay. Something like that. Yeah, that's contributions. Okay. So what about contribution velocity? That sounds fine to me. Um, I think velocity is quite a good word. I like, well, I don't have any problem with velocity, but yeah. we may be able just to kind of use the logic off of CNCF a little bit more. Yes. What do you, Kevin, Vinod, or Georg think of that? I agree. I was thinking the same thing as I was reading this uh, metric that issues by themselves are just discussion. Innovation really happens through changes to the code base and issues are a part to get there, but they're not the final indicator. So I think we should include more here to have true sense of velocity like pull requests and commits. So it's called, I mean, it could be called project velocity or repo velocity or contributor velocity. What is um I just, I like contribution velocity? I like I, I'll vote for contribution also. Okay. Uh, so then is is it the speed of closing issues? Is that what I'm I'm asking this out loud if somebody has read the CNCF stuff. What is the, what's the velocity metric that uh, Ben Lloyd Pearson always talks about? I don't remember. I don't know. I, this is the only velocity metric that I know, the one from CNCF. And they don't look at time. They only look at numbers. So volume. Volume or count. And we can refer to the evolution metrics. I think they have those as dependent variables. Okay. So what are you, um, what were you suggesting, Georg? Yeah, I'll drop it in. I was just looking for the link to use. Okay. Um, in the formula, number of issues. Um, I think this is an atomic metric that we can link to the evolution definition of how to calculate it. You just put it in chat? In the document, oh, under no. formula. Sorry. Yeah, ben, ben usually refers to it as project velocity. So I've heard him talk about it a couple times. Uh, it's in this presentation here from when he was at Samsung. Do you remember what was in it? Uh, so commits, commits per month talks about uh, there's just, there's three slides. So commits is the, is the one that he was focusing on specifically. Okay. Uh, okay. I like the, the inclusion of issues, pull requests and commits. Me too. Um, so then I guess, is it a question of just volume or is there some some 
like time component, like the speed of closing issues, the <laughs> speed of getting a pull request merged and I don't know what you ask about commits, the number of commits maybe you would ask. Well, I think when we redefine this as contributor velocity, uh -huh. um, as, as Georg said, I mean, there's, there's issues, there's, there's pull requests, um, you know, that would all be part of it. It wouldn't just be issues. So I guess the, the question that I have is, is Georg had pointed out that the CNCF is just about a pure count. And same with, it sounds like with what Ben was doing Kevin with commits, that it's just a count. And you're, which is fine, I mean, we can just do like a count of issues plus a count of pull requests plus a count of commits. Mm -hmm. uh, how about we add the like average uh, duration of issue or average duration of a pull request or average duration? Th that truly depicts the velocity. Like, uh, for example, and uh, if a project has average a uh, resolution of issue is like maybe two days. So, and uh, other project have an average re uh, resolution of issues like five days. So the uh, one project with two days is a higher velocity than the other one. Yep. Yeah, the definition of velocity is speed and direction. Okay. And then commits, what is, is commits just like the total number of commits? Do you really measure commits in a time window? Like no. For an issue? That's how I understand it. That What's it's that? how many commits were made during that time period you're analyzing. Yeah. Oh, did you see in the document? I just chatted or chatted. I just jotted these things down. Yep, and I'm adding to formula the ones that uh, correspond to that. Okay. Because we yeah uh, we need to combine these and straighten them out. Yep. Okay, so you have n average duration of issues. Oh yeah, closed issue resolution duration. Is there an average duration of pull request to merge somewhere? Is that yep. exist? I'm adding that right now. It's called okay. review duration. Okay. Review is a pull request in GitHub, a merge request in GitLab, so it's more universal. Should I call it that review duration? Yeah. Okay. Duration. And then closed issue resolution duration. And then, and then, is there just a volume of commits? Evolution doesn't have this, but I think Risk does. Let me check. Okay. Okay, so it's the speed of closing issues, the issue resolution duration. Um, let's see, closed. Oh, I found it. Okay. Evolution calls it code changes. Code issue resolution duration. The issue, oops. The review duration. The volume, is it just the volume of commits? Is that what it is? Volume of commits, yeah. Okay. Is an indicator. And then, Kevin, you said. Velocity is speed and what? Time and speed. Time and what? There was something. Well, 
Kevin has vanished. Okay. And does CNCF say what this is an indicator of for them? Returns to scale? Promising areas in which to get involved. Successful platforms. Okay. I'm okay with innovation for now. We can revisit that later. Okay. Speed of closed issues. The contribution. Contribution to your report. So we are yeah. deviating from the velocity metric that CNCF uses. Say that again. I'm sorry. We are deviating from the velocity metric that CNCF yep. uses. Um, so I, I have a question for you, Andy, since you put this together initially. Um, before we move too far away from your core thought, uh, you had in here as base metrics also broken out by contributor type. And my question is, is that, what does that do and how should we incorporate it or is this even important to incorporate for velocity? Uh, so right now I think it's not important um, maybe in the future we'll want to bring it back, but for now, not important. Okay, so if we drop it, we don't lose anything? No. Okay. The CNCF uh, comparable that you came up with is great. Yeah, it sounds like our deviation is we look at the rate around issues and the rate around pull requests. Yep. That seems to be the difference. Compare labor. I'm gonna, Andy, do you mind if I get rid of this compare labor costs? I don't think that's what this metric is about. That can just go. Okay. Hey, are, are you guys editing a Google Doc right now? Yeah, it's on, we're on the second page. Okay. Same one. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh, duh. Okay. <laughs> the pull one. Or what they say? You know, um, copying. So, yeah. One thing we could do is we could just use exactly the same metrics that are used in the CNCF document to get us started. That way, we could have a direct comparable. And um, we have a deployed case. <laughs> I mean, we, we can't really claim it, <laughs> but we can we can point to it. That's for sure. Well, so I was uh, thinking about the same thing just now because when we have time to close issues, lower number is typically better. Time to close pull requests, lower number is better. Yeah, and so all of the dots that we want to focus on are suddenly grouped in the bottom left corner if we plot them in a chart. And that makes it hard to analyze. You could flip it. <laughs> if we flip it, true. Then we have them all in top right corner. 
But if you reverse it and do what CNCF did, where we use a number of issues, number of pull requests, number of commits, then the highest velocity ones appear in the top right corner. But if you look at the graph, they are using logarithmic. So they're log transforming it so that uh, a lower number comes at the top of the bubble. Yes. Look at the, the X and Y axis uh, description. Yeah. That makes absolute sense to log transform it. So I'm in favor of just duplicating what CNCF has done. Yes. So the description <laughs> contribution, contribution velocity is the number of issues. Is that correct? Number of issues. The number of pull requests. Yep. And the number volume. of commits. All right, so then the formula will have to change a little bit. And they have number of committers as the third axis. Okay. Or number of contributors. Volume of commits and number oops, Okay. Andy, are you all okay with this? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm super okay with it. And okay. um, I really like the idea of using what uh, CNCF has done. And we can, all, we can build on it, by the way, but as a, as a starting point, this just seems great. So then should I just, should I just call this project velocity? Yeah, I think so. And that's kind of how they, they don't ever really say it like that, but in the title, they're like highest velocity projects. Yeah. Okay. And actually, I think that's a, I think it's actually in the larger scheme of things, a really smart idea because when you're talking at chaos con or um, open Source Summit North America, and you just introduced Project Velocity. <laughs> this is just straight from CNCF. <laughs> yeah. We really find we've, there's a lot of value is derived from this. And this analysis has received a lot of attention, so people already recognize it. Yeah. And so I, to me, it's really no different than like in the in the risk working group. I mean, one of their metrics is the reporting of the core infrastructure badge. That's it. I mean, they, they're not reinventing any metric. So core yeah. infrastructure is a badge that already exists at the Linux Foundation. And so this is similar to that. By the way, um, you know, there's a lot of value add that we can provide on top of this. Um, you know, and, and one of the things is we can ask the question, well, what is the value of of being in the top right versus the lower left. And there's a lot of different ways to think about that. And um, if you do the analysis, I mean, the, the value is really big uh, in a lot of cases. Um, I think this is great, potential. We can, talk, we can talk about that. And the other thing we can do is, is actually, you know, provide tooling so that people can do this analysis on their own projects. So here we, you know, we're, we're, we're reusing their metrics, but um, CNCF is not providing the tooling that you can point at your own repos. And, and they are not. Do, does anybody know if they do? Do you know how they made this? Yeah, yeah. I put the link. You have the link on the, the bottom. Okay, I see they do have it. It's under, they have a GitHub repo? Yeah, wow. there's a GitHub repo, GitHub slash CNCF slash velocity. I put it in the known implementations. I see, okay. I'm gonna, are the filters the same here about internal and external contributions, project sources? I think we need a time filter. 
And I think it makes sense to have internal, external to see what is the velocity of my projects outside of my own contributors. I think that's valuable. Yeah, me too. Hey, does, does anyone know this guy, Lucas Grieglicki? Yes. He has come to Chaos Con in the past. Um, you know, it'd be awesome if you could just send him an email saying, hey, you know, we're, we're talking about your work and we'd love to have you in the audience and, you know, we'd love to get your feedback yeah. on it. I, yeah, okay. I, think, I think the work this guy has done is absolutely marvelous. Yeah. That's a good idea if you can send them an email saying, hey, you're taking your idea and running with it. Yeah, kind of like David Wheeler, like just letting him know that we were using the CII stuff. He appreciates it. Yeah. Okay. And Lucas will too. He's a nice guy. Yeah. Okay, so this is, this is good. Looking good. I'm still going through. So I have a couple, at least for me, just so you all know, I have a couple um, action items just to reach out to Sean, particularly on these first two metrics for labor investment. Actually, there's nothing needs to be done there. You can just produce that spreadsheet, Andy. Yeah. But then the second one is we need to ask if Sean can actually produce velocity metrics, Georg, do you? I don't think Batergia has ever done this, have they? Like kind of brought these together? Um, I don't know. Okay. I'll put it on my list to ask. Yeah, yeah ben, they have, nice to get it in there. So for Ben's version of uh, uh, project velocity, he uses, he uses Batergia. That's right, uh, he does. He modified it. Yeah, uh, mind you, he look, it looks like he's specifically talking about commits, uh, but he does have visualizations for that and it's all Baturgia based. Okay. Yeah, so the, the issue with Grimoire Lab is out of the box, there is a separate index for the different data sources and commits and pull requests and issues are in different data sources. So to have a visualization like this, yep. there needs to be a new data form, an alias or something that combines these indexes, which requires additional setup and doesn't support it out of the box. I see, okay. Uh, I think uh, Olga can work because Sean is integrating already all these things like uh, GitHub and Facade and all these are like, in in uh, one schema he's developing in the auger. Yeah, I think to Georg's point, I think like Grimoire Lab and Augur both have this data. Yeah. It's a question of actually smushing it all together <laughs> to demonstrate yeah. this. Perhaps um, if we're reaching out to Lucas, we could also reach out to Ben and get his input on this. Sure. I can easily I'll I'll reach out to Lucas and Ben. Awesome. Thank you. Okay. Um, but I mean, the other the other kind of good good thing on this one, at least in terms of uh, version one releases, there is a known implementation, and it is at CNCF. So. Okay. Well, we are at the top of the hour. I wanted to get through a couple of these. Uh, but would it be okay if next week? We just take on organizational users and project popularity. Yes. Okay. So great session. Yeah, it's good. I, I feel 
happier with these. Yeah. Okay, so I think, um, Andy, you do have an action item, which is to update the GitHub repo so that Kevin can pull the, well, how, how do we want to do this? Do we want to, so we have these changes right now. And so was the idea during this comment period that we just do updates in the repo? Yes. And those are immediately reflected in the website? That was my understanding. Okay. So and, then. And then the freeze occurs at the release. I see. Okay. So Andy, can you merge these things back into the repository? Yes, I will. And then they should be reflected in the web page pretty much immediately. Cool. All right, everybody. Good. Yep. I just added the visualization description, x axis, y axis, and dot size. How about you keep this description after the visualization? Like in oh. the tab of visualization, not in the sample filter and visualization. Cool. Thank you. Sorry, what? I think keep this description after the graph, exactly after the graph. You were saying move this. So to down here. Um, I put it here because we have this section called sample filter and visualization, and that is the definition. Okay. And then for sample implementation, that's where we show the graph of what it actually looks like. So we have the definition first and then the implementation second. Okay. That's my logic. I'm okay with it. They're close enough to each other that hopefully a, a person who's paying attention can figure it out. <laughs> yep. What we can do, so this is what we have done with sample implementations in other graphs, is we have a screenshot of what it looks like in Remore Lab or Augur, and we describe step-by-step -step how to build that and that is basically the visualization part, but hands on in the product. And that goes together. Okay. Okay, cool. All right. So Andy, you're, you're on that. That's your action item. Yes, it is. Okay. Um, good. And, and did anybody else notice, by the way, while I have you all on here that the Fave icon now has a transparent background for chaos, chaos.community. I did not notice. Uh, should, uh, I'll, uh, it looks better. Oh, John. So did you use the one that John made? Yeah, I did. I just pointed him to that. It does look better. Doesn't that look nice. better? I didn't like that white square. It, yeah. it, did, it looked clunky and old. So Huge thank you for getting that. <laughs> Yeah, the behind the scenes yeah. stuff, right? <laughs> I know, it takes time, but it, it's the little things that make it look round. I totally agree. All right, cool. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Have a good weekend. You too. Take care.
Thank you. 